there everybody, how you doing? It's your old pal Cape Joel back again with some news that is positively burning up the comic side of the internet. I am recording this late Monday night, the news broke later for me, you're going to be getting it early Tuesday morning, but essentially, uh, Bleeding Cool, big comic book site that everyone knows, loves, puts up with, they have a tenuous relationship with both fans and creators. They leaked uh, all of the brand new Marvel titles for post-Civil War II, uh, what they're calling Marvel Now, which I do the finger quote thing because Marvel Now, didn't we technically already have a Marvel Now? We did, it's Marvel Now again, Marvel Now 2, it's very strange naming, I, I personally keep calling it post-Civil War 2, because these are the books that we're going to get a chance to read as early as October, and uh, there's a whole big slate of them, we got titles, we got covers, we got writers, we don't have all of them, they're not all complete yet, because again, this is this is fairly new. Chances are I might have to come back and do a second round of these, but uh, yeah, this is this is huge news. This is a massive, massive leak because of Bleeding Cool, and a lot of Marvel people aren't happy. At the time of this recording, uh, Dan Slott and Rich Johnson, the guy who runs uh, Bleeding Cool, they have been in a bitter, bitter Twitter war for the better part of the night now, and I imagine that's going to not stop anytime soon. I mean, Bleeding Cool, they're, they're the place to go if you want comic book scoops. I know some people say that it's spoiler culture that they're contributing to, but, you know, hey, as someone who works online and who is probably going to get this stuff spoiled for him anyway, I'm happy they're there because that means I get to make a video and I get to bring that video to you and you guys get to decide whether or not you like it, whether or not you don't. So, uh, yeah, so this Marvel Now thing, uh, we had already kind of seen some stuff for it. Some of the series in the leak uh, got announced, like the USA Avengers and some of these other titles. The rest are brand new, and the new status quos are totally different, and I guess uh, what better place to start than with Avengers number one? Mark Waid is still writing this. He's also going to be writing Champions, which is the kind of spin-off book from all new, all different Avengers, featuring all the young heroes of the Marvel Universe. This Avengers team, as it stands, has Sam Wilson, Captain America on it still, still Jane Foster Thor, still Vision. New members come in the form of Hercules, which I think is super cool. I loved Hercules' book. I love what's going on in Gods of War right now. Really sad that his book didn't make it, but it's cool to see him on a team. He definitely fills the role of a Hulk-like character of a big bruiser type. We also have the new Wasp, Nadia Pym, the uh, bastard daughter, I guess, of Hank Pym, who's back and doing the rounds. We'll be seeing her more again later. Now, the other member of the team, I can't quite make him out. And it's not just me, I actually asked all my friends on Comic YouTube who they thought that was. He sort of looks like Prowler, but he's the most in the shadow. The colors are wrong, it's green and gold, not purple and uh, green. I don't know who that is. Maybe it's a new character. He looks cool. Overall, dig the makeup of this team here. I think there's going to be some fun stories going on there. Uh, another one of the new books, or at least one of the new things coming soon, is we're going to be getting a brand new Nova series. Sam Alexander is still sticking around. He's going to go off and be a member of the Champions team. But the Nova book looks like it's going to all be about Richard Ryder again. There's just the picture of the helmet and a little subtitle that says coming soon. So all you Dick Ryder fans out there, sorry, sorry, I had to do that. All you Richard Ryder fans out there, you've hoped, you've prayed, you wished, and now you're getting the Nova you want back. And now we got two Novas. And that's kind of the beauty of what Marvel's been doing recently with their young heroes. You know, you build them up in their own book, let them grow an audience, spin them off, then bring the old guy back, and both young and new fans are pleased. So, you know, it's working. It's working out great so far. Ooh, some interesting stuff going down in the pages of Spider-Man, it would seem. Obviously, this is still Bendis at the helm. But, ooh, they seek to be implying that Miles Morales and Spider-Gwen are going to be in a relationship now. They seem to be setting up something between them. Ooh, me wonders what Peter Parker will think about that. I kind of dropped off reading Spider-Gwen, but I know that the place that I stopped, Gwen was worried about kind of, you know, integrating more into the main 616 universe because she just kind of jumps back and forth between 616 and her own Earth. She didn't want to meet Peter Parker because, you know, she figured that would stir up a bunch of emotions. But yeah, wow, Spider-Gwen and Miles, very interesting, very, very interesting. Uh, next up, we have another Avengers book. This was one that was not mentioned alongside uh, USA Avengers or any of those other Avengers books that they talked about. This is called Occupy Avengers. 
And this is from David Walker, the same guy who you may know from his work currently on the old Cyborg book for DC, the current really awesome Power Man and Iron Fist, the really underrated Shaft comics. This Occupy Avengers book looks to kind of be the counterpoint to USA Avengers. This, you know, this is the grassroots uh, people's Avengers team, and the only hero we're seeing on it so far is Clint Barton. This is funny, because supposedly we're going to be getting a Hawkeye book. Well, not supposedly, I know for sure. It's mentioned on the sheet of new titles that I'm going to show you at the end. Hawkeye is getting a book, but it's not going to be him. It's going to be Kate Bishop in the Hawkeye book, and then Clint Barton seems to be heading up this Avengers team, this socially responsible, socially minded team of Avengers by the looks of it, which, you know, it's funny to see an archer with a conscience and everything. I cannot help but think Green Arrow. So, you know, hey, I'm, I'm all for this. I like David Walker. I like Clinton Barton. Sign me up for this one. Next up, we have Uncanny Avengers, which, interestingly enough, is going to be the only Avengers book to keep its name and to not change around. It's also not changing writer. Jerry Duggan is still on board with this. The marching order for this series seems to be is that the Uncanny Avengers find out about uh, Captain America's Hydra affiliations. I assume, obviously, of course, he's not really affiliated with Hydra. Red Skull just messed with his brain to make him think that he was. And they're kicking him to the curb. But the Unity Squad will continue now under Cable, of all people. Cable is going to be leading the team. Hey, this ain't X-Force. <laughs> Although, honestly, with all the mutants on the team, Uncanny Avengers might as well be X-Force at this point. Uh, Deadpool is staying, Brother Voodoo is staying, Synapse is staying, Rogue, Quicksilver, and uh, Johnny Storm are staying. Interestingly enough, it looks like the Wasp is joint going to join the team, though. Not the new Wasp, the old Wasp. Janet is going to be sticking around for this team, which is funny because they're already kind of integrating her into the book right now. I think she's a good fit for the team. I think she gives it a very old Avengers feel. So, you know, that's that's cool. I, I, I think Un Uncanny Avengers is underrated. I've always enjoyed it. Uh, next up from there, we have the USA Avengers. This one already got out. We already got to see what was happening there. Again, cool makeup for this team. Squirrel Girl, who, man, she's just on all the freaking teams now. Red Hulk, Thunderbolt Ross, who somehow got his powers. Time-traveling Daniela Cage, daughter of Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Uh, from the future. Interestingly enough, Luke Cage will be getting a four-issue miniseries from Dexter's Lab creator uh, Gendy Tartakovsky, and uh, Jessica Jones will be coming back in a brand new book as well, just called Jones, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Uh, furthermore, from there, we have The Ultimates, a book that I am hearing great things about, but I have not had a chance to read yet. It is getting rebranded with a new number one, and it's being called Ultimate Squared, because it's got the little two over. Beyond that, it does not look like the team is changing. The writer isn't changing. It's still Al Ewing. So if you're liking that book, I imagine the direction will stay the same. Maybe, maybe now I should catch up on it. Ooh, on the more obscure side of things... After that, we have the Great Lakes Avengers, better known as that weird, crappy team that Squirrel Girl came from. It's all the members that you love, Big Bertha, etc., etc. And it's funny, they're carrying around a Squirrel Girl cutout. I don't imagine this book will last very long, but if you have a particular affinity for the Great Lakes Avengers, I think they, this, they, this might be a good comedy book. I get the feeling. From there, we have uh, new stuff happening in the Black Panther book. Again, still ta Coates writing this. I try really hard to like the Black Panther book, and it's one of the few instances where I go, this book might be too smart for me. Because it's really not about Black Panther or super heroics. It's more about the country of Wakanda as a whole. This cover here makes me think that they're going to be going more in a superhero direction. Uh, Black Panther has reached out to his ex, Storm, as well as Misty Knight and Luke Cage, and I guess he's trying to get some sort of superhero force happening in his own country, to which I say more power to him. I'm all for that. Uh, then we have the Unstoppable Wasp number one. Uh, which again, this is the daughter, this is Nadia Pym in her own book, uh, they definitely seem to be pushing her. Love the costume, by the way. We're getting a lot of new female wasps and everything, because if you've been reading the Scott, uh, Scott Lang, uh, Ant-Man book, his daughter, uh, put on a costume and became Stinger just recently. They also seem to imply that maybe she'll get her growth powers back at some point. They, they did, they didn't mention the other Ant-Man book, they didn't mention, uh, uh, the Scott Lang Ant-Man book in this solicitation. I hope that doesn't mean the book is gone, because I really love that book from Nick Spencer. I'd really hate to see it go away. Uh, Thunderbolt, some interesting stuff going on here. We see that uh, Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, has been captured by Mockingbird, and what we can only assume is the compromised 
Captain America who are keeping him hostage. Hmm. I really have to wonder about this ever since it was revealed at the end of Steve Rogers' Captain America number two that pretty much everything Nick Spencer has been doing is telling one big long story and that is that uh, the Thunderbolts and especially Bucky had a very important piece of the puzzle because they had Kobik. Kobik was the one that the Red Skull used to manipulate Captain America's mind to make him believe that he was an agent of Hydra. So if anyone was going to save the day, it might be Bucky and he looks like he's going to have a hard time saving the day. I hope they change the art on that book. The art really bugged me how they keep trying to affect that 90s aesthetic. 90s art is forgotten for a reason. Uh, we got some stuff happening in the pages of Doctor Strange right now. Bloody reunions. As you can see, there's Dormammu, Baron Mordo. All, all your old favorites. All the magical warriors are coming back. And this, this is just one of what seems to be two... Doctor Strange books happening. There's this one from Jason Aaron, which might be ending, might not be ending. They haven't really said. Again, these are leaks. A lot of stuff isn't confirmed yet. But there is most definitely going to be a second Doctor Strange book, just in time for his movie. Isn't it funny how that happens? Uh, next up, we have Venom in a story called Lethal Arrival, which is obviously a play on the old uh, Venom Lethal Protector series. This looks to be Venom coming back to Earth in a brand new series. He's not the Space Knight anymore. In fact, we don't even know if he's Flash Thompson anymore. He looks like the old Venom, so it might be Eddie Brock again, depending on how Carnage ends, because that's where Eddie Brock is right now as the new Toxin. I think he was Toxin. There's so many symbiotes, it's hard to keep track. I'm pretty sure he's Toxin in that book. I'm interested in this. I really liked the Earth-Faring Venom book uh, before. I thought they didn't give that book enough of a chance before blasting him off into space and having him join the Guardians of the Galaxy and everything. I hope this one is good. Uh, Carnage was a real surprise. I hope they do something interesting with Venom, too. Uh, from there we have, ooh, 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 this is a big one, this is a big one. Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number one from Jerry Conway. I know one of the most hotly contested things in all of Marvel fandom is the Spider-Man marriage. When's it coming back? Should it come back? You know, why did they take it away from us? You know, why can't writers seem to write an older, more mature, married Peter Parker? Uh, the thing about this, I have to wonder, does this mean that the marriage is coming back in the main universe, or more likely because this is his daughter and his wife, and, you know, more or less the art, too, from that Secret Wars tie-in? Will we just be revisiting that world from the Secret Wars tie-in? Is this Marvel's Hail Mary play to try and, you know, appease the older fans who wanted a married Spider-Man while still, you know, having an unattached, hip-swinging Spider-Man? pun not intended if they want to totally spider Gwen it and just be like look here's here's a universe where events went the other way where he actually stayed married and we will write adventures in this universe I think I think that might be a good way to placate some people of course I know there'll be some people who will never be pleased and just be like you know it's either real or it's not you can't have your cake and eat it too Marvel or at least you know most of the time you can't have your cake and eat it too uh, we have Avengers 1.1, again, written by Mark Wade. This looks to be a special throwback issue because you can see it's all the heroes in their classic old-timey uh, costumes. And it's called Earth's Mightiest Shoes to Fill. Whatever that means is up for interpretation. Uh, I think that's cool. I know, you know, point ones are usually hit and miss, but this one looks to be uh, interesting. We haven't had a story with the old-timey Avengers like this in a very long time. Uh, here's the other Doctor Strange book I was talking to you about as well, Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme, and this one seems to be all based around time travel, and we see a series of other magical-like characters that Stephen Strange is going to be running into. Again, with his movie coming up, you can't get enough Strange. They're really, they're really banking on him, they're banking on Benedict Cumberbatch, and I really can't blame them. Uh, another one we have going on is Star-Lord, number one. Now, we had a Star-Lord book before, but it was like a prequel series where they once again told another origin of Peter Quill's origin story, which, you know, you think he has a really easy origin story. He doesn't. His origin is actually really complicated and has changed a lot over the years. This looks to be him on Earth getting hassled by the police and everything. I wonder at what point this will take place. I know I haven't read Guardians in a very, very long time, but when I was last reading it, Kitty Pride was the new Star-Lord, and Peter Quill was, you know, leading Spartax as, uh, as their king. So maybe this is a back-to-basics book. There's gonna be a lot of Guardians love there. Uh, Gamora's gonna be getting a book. Gamora looks to be playing a huge part going on from there, so yeah, that's, uh, that's that one. Uh, Deadpool and the Mercs for Money, and you know, I uh, obviously they're doing stuff with that right now in the main Deadpool book. In fact, they're going to be fighting each other for Civil War 2. I was not totally on board 
for this team at first, but now that I actually look at the makeup of this team, they've got fun characters like Hitmonkey, Domino, Massacre, and even Negasonic Teenage Warhead because she was in the movie. Honestly, this looks like a team I'm willing to read, and I like too that they put the team front and center. Deadpool is on it, but he's far removed from it. This, uh, this book actually looks like it might be fun and funny. Uh, I might give that one a chance. And one of the last books we're looking at here, again, we're not looking at everyone because, you know, there's not a lot of change. I'm just looking at the ones that have the most amount of change. And that is Prowler of all characters. Yeah, Hobie Brown, who we saw as a supervillain, who we saw reform his ways and kind of become like a backup Spider-Man in Dan Slott's book. Uh, he's going to be getting a solo series now. Didn't see that coming, did ya? I mean, Prowler, he's he's got a cool costume, you know, he's got a cool name and everything. I like the fact that he's, you know, kind of a reformed uh, villain type character. What's interesting about this is the story is called You Only Live Twice, and it shows him burying something, burying someone who looks a lot like him. Is this, is this him burying the old Prowler, the man he was, and becoming something new and different? Or is that literally a Hobie Brown who's dead, and this is a new guy who's taken up the Prowler identity? Could be anything, man. Could be anything. I'll, I'll definitely give this one a try. It's Sean Ryan writing this, too. Sean Ryan, of course, for those of you who don't remember, wrote Nova previously and had a truly criminally underrated run on the Suicide Squad for a little bit. So I'm a big booster of Sean Ryan's work, and I'd like to see what's happening with him now. Before we close out this video, let's take a look at some of the books that I didn't get a chance to talk about uh, in the actual solicitation page. I imagine this is what they sent out to actual comic shops so they could order stuff. Interestingly, right off the bat here, one of the books we can see that's getting a new number one is Bullseye, of all things. Yeah, Bullseye is getting a book. Hell yeah. I would read the hell out of that. I wonder, is it going to be the old Bullseye back again, even though he was dead and kind of broken after the events of uh, certain Daredevil stories? Or is this going to be the Lady Bullseye in a book? Uh, either way, uh, that one looks interesting. As you can also see from this, look, uh, from this little page here, not every book is ending and not every book is getting a new number one. Some continue. Sam Wilson, Captain America, will continue numbering as normal. So will Steve Rogers. Uh, we got the Clone Conspiracy number one. A lot of these start in October, by the way. Uh, we got uh, Gamora, as I mentioned before. Uh, we got uh, ooh Squadron Supreme, which supposedly Namor is supposed to come back in that book. They kind of killed him and then brought him back and then killed him again. But yeah, he's going to be coming back in that book and assumedly becoming a big part of that team. So that's interesting. We got Iron Fist number one. Yes, that's right. You're going to get the Power Man and Iron Fist book, and you're also going to get an Iron Fist book. Supposedly, this is going to be about Danny Rand training an apprentice of his own, and it's supposedly that little girl with the dragon from the Carrie Andrews run. I didn't love that book, but I like this idea that they're running with here. Kingpin is going to be getting a book, too, as we can see. Obviously, I was a big fan of this Civil War II tie-in series that Wilson Fisk got. I would happily read a crime book about the Kingpin every week, although I get the feeling that this is going to be one of those books that doesn't last very long, but I'm on board for it. Uh, more stuff we got going on here. Uh, going to be a new Thanos number one. That's going to be from Jim Starlin. I always find the Jim Starlin stuff a little hard to follow. Uh, Deadpool's Mercs for Money, a bunch of them are getting spin-offs, so Slapstick is getting a book, Solo Jason Bourne is getting a book, and Fool Killer are all getting books, and I, I hate to say it, but I don't imagine any of those going past five issues. I imagine those will be indie darlings and not a heck of a lot else. Uh, some other stuff going on here. Oh, uh, you'll notice, looking at this and looking at the panels, no X-Men books. No X-Men books at all in there. We are going to be getting Death of X, which is uh, an event miniseries that's going to be going back in time and showing us the death of the original old Scott Summers and the fight he had with the Inhumans that happened in that six months gap between Secret Wars and currently in the comic books. And I guess to kind of hype that up and make sure everybody is reading it, they've suspended all X-Men books, not just the three main X-Men titles, but also uh, all new Wolverine and Old Man Logan. I hope they're not testing the waters to see if people would care if they canceled all the X-Men books straight up, because I'm actually liking quite a few of those X-Men books, despite Apocalypse War, you know, being a flaming doom crater. I really hope to see some of those continue. So yeah, there's just a little brief guide, a little overview to the Marvel Now titles, the post-Civil War II titles, the Let's See This in October titles. Uh, kind of funny to see them leak out like this. I can only imagine that these uh, titles were supposed to be the centerpiece 
of Marvel's uh, San Diego Comic-Con thing, which is going to be in a couple weeks from now. But hey, you got to hear it first, every, you got to hear it here first, everyone. Ain't that nice? Don't that make you feel good? I know I enjoyed making the video. And when we get more information on this and when we get more covers, which I imagine we will, if people are interested, I'll come back and do this again. So until next time, everyone, I'm Cape Joel, and I will see you later. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer? Or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.